I don't believe Jeffrey has a child's best interests at heart. I think he had his own career at the forefront of his mind. Jeffrey hasn't become a good person. Jeffrey's got better at hiding who he is. That story was not Jeffrey's to tell. <sighs> okay. Hey guys, so today's video is the long awaited one. The one I've been promising for a long time. It's been hard to get all the information and clips together, so I apologise for the delay. We're going to talk about Jeffree Star today, and I believe that Jeffree Star is a compulsive liar. We're going to talk about the accusations, we're going to talk about all of the dramageddons, a number of things to get through, so let's get into this. So Jeffree Star, if you've been living under a rock for the past, you know, 10 years, Jeffree Star is a YouTuber nowadays and a business owner. When Jeffree Star started becoming famous, kind of, um, was on MySpace. Oh, the good old days. I remember being 17, 15 years ago, almost. Jesus, I feel old. Jeffree Star was sort of known for his shock content. Um, I just remember there being a picture of him licking cereal off the floor. I remember that because there was a lot of that sort of shock content because there was these two models that I thought were really cool. Crashy Life something or other. It was all about that shock content on MySpace. I mean, I remember having a picture, this was when I was like 16, and I was trying to be like really cool and edgy. So I took a picture, I would never do this nowadays. I don't even remember how I did this. I had like fake blood on my arms, as if I'd like cut my wrists. Which I used to be a cutter back then too. It's only almost very Johnny Gilbert, but like 15 years ago. My space pictures were very high up, showing the body sort of pictures. I was very skinny at the time as well because I didn't eat very much. I was trying to be like a size 8 slim. I don't know if I had an eating disorder or if I just had body dysmorphia. So yeah, so I knew Jeffrey Star from that. Um, I actually wasn't aware until, until Jeffrey did the Shane the first Shane series that Jeffree Star had come out with music. I genuinely had no idea. I'd seen Jeffree Star in an Aiden, I think they were called, video. I also saw Jeffree Star in a Good Charlotte video, I believe, as well. But other than that, I hadn't seen Jeffree Star at all. Didn't even actually know his name at the time. He was very androgynous. I wasn't sure if he identified as a man or a woman. I'd only ever seen pictures, I'd never seen video or anything. Then Jeffree Star started popping up on YouTube, mainly when Jeffree Star did collaborations with Nicki Tutorials. Did And of course now Jeffree Star is this probably multi-million dollar mogul. Back in the MySpace days, as I mentioned, there was a lot of shock content. Jeffree Star posted a video with his taser. Always got to carry weapons with you. So my purse. Okay, so we have a lot of shit in here. First of all, we have a butcher knife. Right, ladies? If a guy's gonna fucking talk shit to you, cut his motherfucking dick off. And then we have the baton. You know what I mean? Like, if a bitch wants to get slick, you're gonna get your motherfucking ass beat. And of course we have the Jeffree Star taser. I think they might be illegal, but, you know, that's what fucking a police officer's dick's for, I guess. And of course you can't forget the fucking blinged out gun. Bam, motherfucker. Which will become relevant later. Jeffree Star had, even in his music videos, he had a lot of weaponry. I hate that he like was packing all of these weapons into his bag. That's so tasteless. There was, I think it was prom night. He put like a gun and a taser and a knife, I think, something like, he put weapons into a handbag to go to prom. Considering the accusation, probably wasn't a good look. If you wanna know all about it, Kat Tenbarge has done a huge article that she posted on October 1st, 2020 on Insider. It thoroughly depicts how manipulative and exploitative Jeffree Star is. Just reading a little bit of the article. The Insider investigation suggests that it wasn't all an act. Several former associates say Star engaged in violent and abusive behaviour on multiple occasions during the late 2000s, including multiple allegations of sexual assault. 
Four people who spoke with Insider said Stark groped men around him without consent. And there is literal video proof of this. There is a video of a guy who they were talking to and Jeffrey just goes and gropes his genitals over his clothes. Oh, you're not, you're not, you're not oh, nice I knew it was big. I had a whole Twitter debate basically about this where people think that sexual assault is only the act of sex. That is not the fucking case. The literal definition is when a person intentionally sexually touches another person without that person's consent. So that can be kissing them, that can be groping a body part, that can be physically assaulting them. So these kind of bullshit pranks. My mind is, ah! I did it! What? Things that people do for shock value is still sexual assault. Just because it's not meant in a aggressive, like demeaning, whatever way, does not make it lesser than. It is still sexual assault. And it needs to be fucking seen as such. Stop trying to excuse bad behaviour just because you like that YouTuber. They are still a disgusting human being. And breathe. Back to the article. Five people told Insider they personally saw Star using a close range stun gun or other tasing device to hurt and intimidate people. So Star was known by the people around him that he would use weapons to intimidate people. They knew that was happening and did nothing about it. They are culpable as well, just to be clear. And five people told Insider that in 2009, Star used a taser on a homeless teen who had rejected his affections in a movie theater. That teen later stayed the night in Star's apartment and told Insider that Star gave him Ambien until he was intoxicated and forcefully performed oral sex on him without his consent. Several people and publicly available internet posts corroborate key components of the former homeless teen's account. With this homeless teen, um, I believe this was Gage, I fucking hate that people on Twitter will say, well, if he was so intimidated by Jeffree Star, Gage didn't have to stay at Jeffree Star's place. Excuse me, have you ever been homeless? Because I haven't. If someone offers you their home and you have no other option, you would rather sleep on a sofa, for instance, and then have to try and sleep on like a park bench or under a bush or in a doorway. Being homeless, being cold, not knowing when you're gonna sleep next or where your next meal's gonna come from, that's a very fucking scary thing. And to say that that teenager should have known better, how fucking dare you? Jeffree Star should not have taken advantage of someone. Point blank, period. Stop making excuses for him. He's an adult. I'm pretty sure he can make them himself. This is also the story, I believe, that Eugenia Cooney was trying to defend Jeffree Star on. The one that she didn't bother to read before she started to defend him. Can you Thank you, welcome Jeffrey to New Orleans. With all the sexual assault victims who have come forward, he has never apologized for um, it. Welcome to New Orleans. I don't feel, I feel like sometimes online, a lot of people will say like a lot of things. And in my opinion, I think to call somebody something really terrible, like to call someone really terrible things without like proof against people and things like that can be really messed up and hurtful to people. And I think that, you know, like um, a lot of like mistakes, I'm not saying about like sexual assault stuff because I don't even like think that stuff is like, I don't like, there's not even like proof against a lot of that stuff. So like, I don't feel like that, I, I would never call someone that. There have been other videos as well. There was a video of a guy who was visibly intoxicated. He was curled around the toilet. He had his trousers around his ankles and Jeffree Star had said something along the lines of that they had just had sex and that they wanted to boot him out. They sort of had their fun with him as if he was a toy you could just pick up and use. Jeffree Star told the guy to leave. The guy ambled out of the apartment so intoxicated. He was sort of the paralytically drunk. So usually after we sleep with people, we walk them out of our house and this guy passed out in my bathroom and he won't wake up and I'm gonna kill myself. So we're gonna get him the fuck out of here. Did you love fucking me? <laughs> Roxy, grab his hand. 
<sighs> and the video cuts off. So what Jeffree Star says, and from everything that's gone on, I don't believe anything this guy says. I hope this is the case, considering all of, even the little things that Jeffree Star's happy to lie about, I wouldn't be surprised. Jeffree's claim is that they helped him up and got him a cab home. We met that guy at a bar, he came home with us, nothing sexual happened, he was too drunk. Um, and my friend Roxy, and she was gonna hook up with that guy, never did, and and we, we started filming it because he puked all over my floor. A person, we called the cab later, they sat outside of my apartment um, that people have all seen, uh, on my YouTube channel, and he sat there for 30 minutes, we called him a cab, we shoved him in. A decent human being would take that person home and make sure that they don't choke on their own vomit when they're asleep. Can't expect everything. Then we have the Dahi Vanity situation. I'm gonna be going backwards and forwards in time a little bit. The reason I want to speak about Dahi Vanity is because it's similar accusations. I feel like it kind of ties in with this. Started around the same time. So when Jeffree Star was at the peak of his singing career, he used to do festivals with Blood on the Dance Floor. If you don't know who Blood on the Dance Floor is, don't worry, I didn't know who they were either. I was apparently one of the only MySpace kids that that had sort of gone right over their head. I think because I live in the UK and not in the US. Blood on the Dance Floor was some shit band. They made some type of music. I am not going to play any of it for copyright reasons and also because your ears might bleed because it's awful in my opinion. Most of the people that went to that place did actually like the music which is hilarious. Whilst on tour with these guys, Jeffree Star was on stage with them. They had very sexual lyrics. I did Jeffree for that matter. They would bring these young teenagers. I'm not talking 17, 18. I'm talking maybe 12, 13. Would bring them onto the stage and gyrate on them. Or dry hump them. Ash Costello drops a huge Tumblr post addressing quite a few details. She said, I've never met a bigger bully in my life. I have never felt so uncomfortable. Showing your butt to kids, having kids grab your dick on stage, telling 12 year olds you're gonna come on their faces, making derogatory comments to me on stage, hitting fans on the head with equipment, telling my friends they are band whores on stage because they won't say into the mic his cum tastes good, watching the cops get called on tour because it was with someone under the age limit, that is just a tiny, 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 tiny portion of what I had to watch every night. Not to mention what was done to me and done to so many other girls. When Ash Costello spoke up, she said that she was reached out to by many girls also victimized by Davi. She filed a police report, but ultimately the case was not pursued due to jurisdictional issues. It was gross. If this guy, Davi Vanity, is willing to do that in front of a live audience, you can see where this is going. There have been multiple accusations, one of which he was detained for. He was taken into a police station because he had sexually assaulted someone. He is the pinnacle of one of the most disgusting types of human being. He's the type of person that if he was on fire, you wouldn't fucking spit on him. The girl that was assaulted dropped the sexual assault accusation. I can't remember why. I believe she said on the Chris Hansen interview, this was about two years ago that I listened to it. I think it was around the fact that she didn't have much evidence except for he said, she said because after she was sexually assaulted, he took her like to the bathroom or something and said to get cleaned up. Let's just say that she washed away a lot of evidence. Because of that, it was unfortunately he said, she said, and she wasn't comfortable in pursuing it. What happens? Do you drop the charges? Do the police decide not to proceed with the charges? What went down there? Um, so we had decided not to press charges. We had actually decided to have the state can press charges. Um, and that's what we had decided to do. They had sent me to the hospital for a rape kit, but once I had told them, you know, I mean, at the time I was 17, I, and just sexually assaulted, I wasn't worried about preserving evidence. I had gone and I had swished my mouth with like soda. I just felt gross and I had wanted to get that off me. Um, so they had sent me to the hospital for a rape kit, but after telling the doctors what I'd done, they had said, yeah, the odds are we're not gonna find- I don't blame her for that. Do I want to say this? <sighs> okay. 
I didn't think I was going to talk about this in in this video, but I think it's important um, to sort of highlight that not all sexual assault survivors come forward. Not all sexual assault survivors are comfortable in doing that. Some people, like myself, haven't ever really spoken about it. And because you were young when it happened, by the time you've realised the statute of limitations is up. So the best you can do is just make sure that person is never in your life again. Damien was 12 or 13. Damien had a very open relationship, if almost, with Darby Vanity. Damien was seen multiple times by bandmates. It was one of those open secret type things. Like I wouldn't, it, it's so terrible because I look back overall at the the attitudes in the scene about things um the things that we would joke about and how not funny they were mm -hmm. we're like oh you know he likes him young like that's not funny like that was that was how we spoke that's how we talked mm -hmm. and it was everyone we all talked like that and it wasn't funny but um yeah but we but we knew because there was his 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 music drew a very young audience and he obviously really enjoyed that his music drew such a young audience mm -hmm. and um yeah and it was just something that we knew another thing we talked about actually had to do with uh jeffrey star um mm -hmm. where you talked about how both he and jay knew the relationship between you and dobby and actually witnessed him uh kissing you yeah, they witnessed many girls kissing him. I wasn't the only one. Davi was very affectionate with a lot of his fans, and he was fucking a lot of them. And it it was normal in the scene to be kind of, like, lovey and touchy and stuff, but, like, Davi took it quite a bit far with quite a few very young fans, and Jeffree Star and Jay witnessed it. Jeffree said on Twitter that he can no longer support Blood on the Dance Floor and how disgusting Darby is. Touching children and enjoying their attention is evil. Fuck off, sicko. Being on tour with that child fucker has made me see the truth. I regret ever doing a song with that pig. Rip, because you'll never be me. Classy. If you support that piece of shit, then unfollow me, because you're supporting child molestation. Darby is the lowest, worthless scum I've ever met. So a few months later, Jeffrey then said, We all get over the past. Everything with blood on the dance floor and I is great. Stop the negativity and smile. So, Jeffrey Star was interviewed by Chris Hansen. I may do a full video on Chris Hansen because every single person's opinions around Chris Hansen has just. <whistles> they've just taken a full fucking nosedive. Especially around this point, it was a very biased interview. So Jeffree Star made a point of saying that, and this may very well be true, Jeffree said the reason Jeffree went back on tour with Darby Vanity and the rest of the blood on the dance floor was the fact that someone he trusted, someone who had kids. So I did my own research. So I reached out to Brandy. Now Brandy Wynn was a band member of Blood on the Dance Floor for years and years. Um, she's a mother of four. I said, Brandy, have you ever seen anything illegal for real, because our agents are trying to put this tour together with them on it, and I will, and I'm not gonna do it. Um, and I would never put him in any light ever again if you have seen something. Because if that's the case, I would rather die than work with him. And she, as a mother, said, Jeffrey, I've seen inappropriate things, but nothing illegal. You know, Davi is offensive and crass, and da 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 da. da. And that somehow made him reevaluate his opinions, even though he saw with his own eyes what he was doing with children. That for one, there is no such thing as consensual sex with a child. So even if that wasn't the case that specific time, he knew that that child could have been in danger. On that interview, Jeffrey does say that he doesn't remember at all seeing anyone being taken in the back. Because Chris if I saw, don't you think he would be behind bars? That I don't have anything to report. If I actually saw and witnessed something, he would be rotting in jail this very moment. But I never saw anything besides 
inappropriate behavior. Like the things on stage at that time were not very uh, crazy. Look no, because you're more likely to cover your own back than protect a child. I don't believe Jeffrey has a child's best interests at heart. I think he had his own career at the forefront of his mind. The same goes to Jeffree Star and his tirade of tweets, which only came out after he was personally financially affected by Davi. But then as soon as some shit, like it, it was all glazed over, he went right back to supporting him. And it seems like it's all about financial, whether or not Davi is lining your pockets not actually whether they care about victims. So already you can see that you have Jeffrey not being able, to, at the very least, not being able to really remember what happened in the past around the taser incident, around Darby Vanity, but there are more. So let's talk about his racist past, shall we? There's a couple of videos I uh, vividly remember. One was Jeffrey walking down the street and there was two women that walked past. I can't remember if they said something or if Jeffrey just verbally attacked them. Shut up, you fucking nigger, bitch! What? Why the fuck you call me, bitch? Oh, hell no. Get back here, bitch! Fuck you, bitch! I'll fuck you up! You fucking faggot, bitch! Like oh. Screaming at me. <laughs> oh hell no. Let's go right now. I'll kill you, bitch! Jeffrey shouted the N-word at them. In the first Shane series with Jeffrey, Jeffrey said, Oh, but just doing it to be shocking. I mean, I didn't do it with any malintent because I mean they were Caucasian women. 13 now, this is 13 years ago, I think. I was 19, and we are on the streets of Miami on the boardwalk. And there is a bunch of chicks screaming, you fucking faggot, freak, um, at me. So I turn around and I say some really vicious stuff back. Shut up, you fucking bitch. Now, what I've never said before, because I feel like if you try to defend something like racism or saying something really awful, it just doesn't ever work out. Yeah. But if you go and find the footage, the people I'm screaming at are Caucasian. Yeah, what I said was racist, yeah. but I wasn't saying it to a person of color. I was saying a horrible, offensive word to cut back at someone calling me something awful. And yet there's another video where it was meant to be some kind of skit with a drag queen, I believe, and Jeffrey, to be shocking, said... So we're pretending to be on the phone together, and I say like, oh, you need to go to Mac, and like, if, if you don't get your like foundation color correct, like I'm gonna uh, throw battery acid on you, girl. You had snake battery acid in my auntie face! What? Yes, you did! Don't deny that crap! Well, maybe if she wasn't wearing the wrong foundation color, I wouldn't have to splash no battery acid. I wanted to lighten her skin tone, girl. Okay. Throw a battery acid to- oh. To lighten your skin. Jeffrey addressed I think, I think the video was just called Racism, but it was one of those YouTube apology bullshit videos where they don't address shit, they don't show shit. I want to look everyone in the eyes and let you know that everything that you have seen is so just wrong. I am so sorry for my words. I am so sorry for everything that I've said in my past. Jeffrey spoke in general terms. It's kind of the never doing this again before the never doing this again video. At the time, everyone wanted to believe that Jeffrey had turned over a new leaf and was trying to be a better person. Of course you want to believe that. Everyone wants to believe the person that they watch or look up to or appreciate or that gets them out of a funk when they're having a bad day is a good person at heart. You don't automatically want to think someone's the bad guy. People who weren't directly affected by what Jeffrey had done, let's give him the benefit of the doubt. But during BLM, I think it became quite clear that Jeffrey hasn't become a good person. Jeffrey's got better at hiding who he is. During BLM, you may have seen that in America, people were being shot in the face with rubber bullets by police. It was awful. The brand Dolls Kill took a photo of their business with the police by the side of their business showing support for the police and considering everything that was happening with the police that wasn't exactly a good look. However, one thing you don't do is jump into that person's DMs 
and say they hope they get shot in the face with a rubber bullet, that you hope that harm comes to them. Jeffrey hasn't changed. Nope, I don't believe that Jeffrey changed. I mean, what sort of person have you got to be to wish harm on someone you don't like? There's plenty of people I don't like. I mean, look at all the predators I've had to speak about. But it's like when people go to prison, you still have to treat them as a human being. Everyone deserves human rights. Let's talk about Dramageddon. There was a picture of Manny, Laura, Nikita, and I want to say Gabriel Zamora, putting their finger up in a picture. And Jeffrey took it very seriously. Jeffrey took it so seriously that his fans tried to end three people's career. I'm not excusing this behaviour. There was racist tweets from especially Laura. I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna do a whole video about Nikita in future, especially considering her brand has just been picked up by Beauty Bay. Beauty Bay, what the fuck are you thinking? Someone needs to speak to their PR team. Laura Lee made some racist tweets about, I don't know, 10, 12 years ago. She did just hit 5 million subscribers on YouTube. I remember because she had some sort of picture with, with like burgers that showed the number five or something. I can't even remember what Jeffrey did or said. It probably went off on his Instagram stories, no doubt. Uh, all I know is that some people tried to bully me and they really ended up ending themselves. These tweets were sort of found. Laura Lee made a really bad video in response about it. I'm so sorry for disappointing you. To disappoint you all who have supported me for so many years. Nikita didn't address it at all. I know I have said some very insensitive things, especially when I was younger. I take full responsibility. Gabriel Zamora. The apology that I do owe on camera is to Jeffrey. I'm sorry just for everything. Manny addressed it last. It was almost like they'd all sort of spoken about how to deal with it. I want to apologize to Gabby because watching that video, I can see the hurt in his eyes. And it's funny because to this day, people like Laura, when was the last time Laura Lee was in any kind of drama? Laura keeps to herself. She does like home decorating stuff. She's, you know, she's found her lane. Manny, Manny's brand is doing incredible. Nikita is Nikita. Like for some reason she's, how old is she? She tagged herself to TikTokers who are like 17, 18 years old. It's really weird. Every picture I see with her and them just makes me uncomfortable. Laura basically did the time for her racist tweets, but Jeffrey is expected to be forgiven immediately. Make that make sense. Is it because she's a woman and women are expected to do everything perfectly? I'm not excusing her behavior at all. I'm just questioning why we treat women different to the way we treat men. I mean, even James Charles made Ebola jokes. What excuse does Jeffrey have? He was in a bad place, let me guess. Then we have the James Charles debacle. The main bit with James Charles is the fact that when everything happened after Tati's video, Jeffrey said that there's a reason James hasn't been over his and Nathan's house since February or something. And yet, if you look at the timeline, there's a tweet after I think it's around like April or something. It was asking him to come over. Like Jeffrey cannot get timelines right because I am pretty certain he's a compulsive liar. James's brother tried to defend him on Twitter. James's brother was around 16, 17 at the time. And this 30 year old man, Jeffrey Starr, viciously tweeted back at him. Obviously there's a lot that's happened with James Charles. You may have seen from my previous video, I am not saying that anything that James has done, speaking to people underage, send, asking for nudes, sending them nudes, using his power to try and manipulate people. I'm not saying any of that's okay. It does not excuse this. And that's what disgusts me. People like Keemstar are now holding Jeffrey up as if to say, look, Jeffrey and Tati tried to tell us what they did what Jeffrey, Tatty and Shane did was disgusting. At the time, they had no real evidence to say this is what James was doing. They tried to ruin a 19 year old's career, a 19 year old's life. Even Tatty said that he high floor of a building contemplating suicide. That he was out of the country on the high floor of a hotel and I was afraid for him hurting himself. My head and brain for a, 
a hot minute went to a place so dark that I didn't think that I was going to come back from. And they didn't give a fuck because as far as they were concerned, makeup sales mattered more. Shane texted me back and said that I should not be nervous about the 50th floor, that James Charles was a narcissist and that he would never do that. What sort of person have you got to be? And of course this came back around again on the Mum's Basement podcast. Teamstar asks Jeffrey, accused him of being a predator, and Jeffrey tries to use some kind of voice note, voicemail, something that isn't his. He's happy to show Faze Banks, and Faze was clearly on Jeffrey's side in that podcast. So if you want, we can pause and I can go in another room and play Banks what I have on my phone, and he can determine if he would have sent the same tweet. Whereas there was other people that weren't. You flat out said, I saw some shit, you know what I mean? Similar enough, I'm sorry, it's similar enough. I'm lost. Colossal was crazy. Oliver, I really, really rate him. Someone that was a possible victim of James Charles and show that as if it was tea, as if it was something interesting. That story was not Jeffrey's to tell. How fucking dare you act as this is some little tea remark that you can use as a fucking manipulative tactic. It's gross. It's really fucking gross. Similar to the Omrika accusations, there's no fucking context around these things. So you don't know if you should believe it or not. If it is a true accusation, it's almost impossible for you to believe coming from someone with such a terrible fucking history. There is no way we would believe him without tangible, proper evidence. Not only did he try to manipulate Faze Banks with this, he's tried to manipulate Tati with this, and this is likely why Tati made that video. The night before I did film, Jeffrey sent me what he claimed was an audio file from an alleged victim and told me to listen to the pain in their voice. The audio was clearly a small portion of a larger conversation. It wasn't enough for me to contact the authorities. It was enough to scare me. But Jeffrey has also tried to manipulate Blair White with this. He then provided me with receipts of a voice memo from a YouTuber who was allegedly sexually molested by James Charles. And it's credible. It's a YouTuber, it, it's credible. It is none of these people's responsibility to bring this story to light. This person is comfortable with them doing that, okay, fine. But to use it as some sort of chess piece to manipulate someone so gross and just shows that Jeffrey is exactly the same person he has been from 10, 12 years ago. The last quick thing I wanna mention is how Jeffrey treats his fans. There's been so many fucking comments of him degrading them, bashing them. You don't need to whore yourself out on every single post. I'm congratulating someone on a job. Why the f are you making this about you? Bye. So the fan named Keanu responded and said, not a good feeling to be talked about like that by someone you've looked up to for years. To which Jeffrey responded, maybe you will learn some respect now that someone was honest with you. I never had to use anyone to get to where I am. I was congratulating someone on achieving something and you made it about yourself. Can't relate. Can't relate. So the tweets were deleted, but the fan decided to repost them and tell her side of the story. She said, I've been a fan of Jeffree Star for years, spent hundreds of my own hard earned minimum wage dollars on his products, and to be humiliated in such a way doesn't feel good. I go to college, work, and do makeup. Just trying to make something of myself, I am crying. There was a video of Austin McBroom where someone tried to give him merch for free. And I said that these sort of people need to remember that without their fans, they are nothing. And there was another video of, I think she was a singer. I'm sorry, I don't remember her name. She was offered merch for free from a fan. And she paid the fan. She was like, no, everything costs something. I'm going to pay you for it. How much is it? No, it's for you. How much is it? How much is it? No, no, this, I made it. No, I made it just for you. Uh, I made the trip. I got no, the whole no, stuff. No, Oh. No, but it, everything costs, costs money. Yeah, it's People work into it, so thank you. Yeah. Yes, this is what Austin should have done. At the very least, Austin could have just said, no, thank you. He just said, I don't want that shit. It was so demeaning and degrading to someone who spent time and effort on something for you. I don't think Jeffree Star's any better. I'm sure he's great at meet and greets because, you know, you kind of have to be. And when he's not degrading his fans, he's blocking them. Most of the time for nothing. People thought I was, like, salty about this. 
I genuinely just thought it was fucking hilarious. It made me laugh for about five minutes. I, of all people, have now been blocked by Jeffree Star. All I did was comment on a post by Chris Avery Bennett, someone who has accused Jeffrey. Keen tried to start this debate with me on what happened to me because I didn't have the physical evidence to back it up. Jeffrey did send a photo. Uh, I know what Jeffrey's room looks like. Yep. I, uh, everybody knew what Jeffrey's room looked like. So I'm pretty sure if you saw Jeffrey Star with, you know, his, yeah. Uh, if you saw that with the and tattoos the, that yeah, I saw tattoos. and the hands that I recognized, it just, there was no mistaking it. And Jeffrey had to unblock Chris to see who had commented or liked it or whatever and manually block all of them. That's how petty Jeffrey is. I've said that a block function is there to set a boundary. I'm fine with being blocked. I have no problem being blocked. I just, to me, I don't understand why me comment on something would automatically get me blocked. Looks like you got something to hide more than anything. I really don't think Jeffree Star is a good person. There's so much history of this kind of manipulative, exploitative, abusive behaviour. I mean, his brand is tanking. His brand was in TK Maxx because I thought, because the conspiracy palette with Shane Dawson is no longer on the Beauty Bay website. I thought Beauty Bay, because it's a UK brand, had put all their stock in TK Maxx because they no longer wanted to be associated with Shane Dawson and therefore got rid of it. And now, Jeffrey has said that actually that's to do with Morphe and Morphe has done him dirty or something because they finally kicked his brand. My name is in TJ Maxx and there's nothing wrong with that. But about six months ago, Morphe put me in TK Maxx, which is in the UK. Um, and the conspiracy collection was there. I never really acknowledged it. I was afraid of speaking on anything because anytime I say anything, it always gets misconstrued. But I think I'm tired of being afraid and I think if things need to go on the record and be set straight, it's time. There's also products in TJ Maxx. One of which Def Noodles said was a Jeffree Star Cosmetics product. I said that's not even a Jeffree Star product, that's a Jouer collaboration. Not only is his brand in TK Maxx and TJ Maxx, but he's also doing buy and get on free on palettes. So his brand must be doing really well. To be clear, no one would be saying any of this shit or being shady about him being in TK Maxx or TJ Maxx if he hadn't a shaded Kat Von D doing the same. What's over here? <gasps> oh, uh, uh. <laughs> I'll be over here. I don't think it's bad for brands to be in TK Maxx or TJ Maxx. Big brands like Anastasia Beverly Hills, YSL, like there's so many brands that put their stuff in TK Maxx and TJ Maxx when things don't sell or things are close to expiring. Repackaging, old packaging goes into TK Maxx or TJ Maxx. There isn't anything wrong with being in discount stores. If Jeffrey hadn't a shaded, no one will be talking about it. He made his bed, he's got a lie in it now. For all the things of Jeffree Star to speak about on his channel, it's the items in TK Maxx and TJ Maxx he feels obliged to discuss. Wow, he really has his priorities straight, doesn't he? The last really quick thing um, around Jeffree Star being a compulsive liar. In the, the first Shane series, Jeffree mentioned that he's never drunk a day in his life. And yet there are loads of tweets, even pictures, of him drinking alcohol. Never tried alcohol before. I know that's gonna seem shocking to some people. I think I've never sipped a beer, never tried wine. Not into drugs, not into alcohol. Yeah, which people don't believe. I've never tried a beer, never tried alcohol before. What? Never tried wine. Because I don't drink alcohol, I don't get wasted. I chose to never drink at a really young age. I've stuck to it. I don't see the point in it now. I like, if you feel the need to lie about every single little thing, how is anyone meant to believe you? Really, really makes me wonder. I hope you enjoyed this long video. I'm sure there's plenty of stuff that I've missed. I, I genuinely apologize. This is everything I could kind of get my hands on. I wanted to make sure I had evidence to back everything up. I apologize if I've missed stuff. 
it's 10 to 12 years worth of information i'm sorry and one person if you did enjoy the video make sure to give it a like and if you didn't like it make sure to give it a dislike while the dislike button is still available if you enjoyed this video please make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to make sure you are recommended for some reason my videos don't always come up in recommendations also make sure you're still subscribed youtube unsubscribed a bunch of people a couple of weeks ago i hope you enjoyed the video and i hope to see you all in the next one bye